Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to that audio tech show, the John Audio Tech Show. Well, let's get this in the shot a little better. In the last video, I talked about negative feedback and phase stability and loop stability, whatever you want to call it, dealing with our audio amplifier project here. So now, in this video, I want to take a look at changing the Miller compensation capacitors to different values, even running the amp empty without one, seeing how it performs, seeing what it does. I would expect it to oscillate. I'm sure it will. So I mentioned in the other video that I was using what's known as Miller compensation with the Miller cap that, in this case, is across the collector to base of the voltage amplification stage transistor which allows this amplifier to be stable, or so we hope. Before we get started on that, I did make a lot of changes to this board. I'm going to run through all the changes that I made. So one thing I did do is put a socket here so I can unplug the Miller compensation cap and switch it with different values. So that will certainly make that a lot easier. And somebody mentioned that I should remove the input RF filter capacitor the uh, 220 picofarad cap that's on the input that acts as a low pass filter which blocks out high frequencies. I thought I mentioned that but I removed that a while ago before I ran the first set of square wave tests. You have to have that out of there or it's going to take the edge off of the square waves that I went through all the effort to make them as fast as I could and if you low pass filter them they're going to lose that edge, that sharp edge. In other words, they'll be somewhat band limited. Another change I made is to increase the current in the input stage. Originally, I was running it at 1.2 milliamps, and I noticed that the amplifier was not as fast. It, I should say it didn't have the slew rate. Its slew rate was around 10 volts per microsecond, which is okay for a 60 watt, 50 or 60 watt amplifier, but it's a little borderline, so I'd like it to run a little bit faster. So increasing the current in the input stage allows it to drive the successive stage with more current, and having that dominant Miller capacitor in there, it's important that it has enough current to help charge that capacitor. And as you might know, the amount of current you have determines how fast you can charge a capacitance. So I brought the current up to about 2.4 milliamps in the input stage. And that's more in line with what you run these input stages at with this type of amplifier. So in order to do that, it's really simple. Just change this resistor in the current source of the input stage. It was originally 1K and I brought it down to 470. That increases the current the current source will supply to the input stage. I also decreased the value of these emitter degeneration resistors on the current mirror. They were 470. I brought them down to 220. 470 seemed a little bit high to me. It's kind of a balance. Everything is a balance with these amps. If you have the current source too high, too much current, then you can have linearity issues. And with the emitter degeneration, if the resistance is too high, it cuts into the transistor's gain. So you lose the effect of having the transistor there, though you gain linearity. But if you didn't have them at all, you'd have a lot of gain, but a lot of nonlinearity. So you want to kind of balance it and have the best of both worlds. The next thing I did was the base stopper resistors. If you remember from the earlier video, I put those in to help with the stability of the output stage. Well, I did some experimenting. I took those out again since putting the bypass caps near to the output stage corrected that oscillation where we were having that 49 megahertz oscillation in the output transistors. So I wanted to see if I got rid of those base stoppers, what it would do. When I took those out, I was getting oscillation again. It was very low, but it was still oscillating at around 50 megahertz. And it was really on the verge of instability. Because if I just touch my finger on the tab of the output transistor, the oscillation would go away. 
So what I did is I installed base stopper resistors again. I had some 2.2 ohms. I was running 5 before. I wanted to minimize the value of those resistors, but still have the effect of the stability they help provide. So I was able to put those on the board here on the top side. Before I had them on the bottom side, so I rearranged some of the traces of the, you know, the copper here. and was able to get them on the top side or component side if you will and the output stage is now stable again another thing I did before I put the new base stopper resistors in I was running without well if you remember I ran these ground leads over here to the output stage so I can bypass the power supply rails near to the output transistors which brought the stability under control so another thing I did was short the grounds together with a strap right here and you might be wondering well it's just ground what would that do well I want to emulate something like a flood filled ground to some extent I mean it's not perfect and it's kind of a loop a loop is not ideal but I just wanted to see the effect and when I did that it brought that oscillation down from 30 millivolts down to about 8 millivolts so just that strap right there did that in fact at some points the amp was not even oscillating but it was yeah, you know, right on the verge and still another thing I wanted to try is I put another ground for the output so one of the output grounds returns near to this capacitor bank here and the other ground returns right at this point at the output stage near to the um, decoupling caps I'm using there but it's towards one side you know, I could have stripped this wire and put it here but I just put it here for now it might cause ringing on one side of the waveform and not the other I'm just kinda curious of what it will do and still yet another thing I put this little shorting bar here it's like a little switch if I push on it it'll short this LR this inductor in resistor it'll remove that from the circuit and uh, that's this right here we call it a teal network and I want to see the effect of having that in and then taking it out of the circuit how it affects the ringing or the stability and to have my list here I think I covered all the little changes so now I want to get the amplifier put back on the heat sink and powered up and we'll start playing around with the Miller capacitance and checking the stability okay I have the amp board hooked up to the heat sink jig to help keep it cool 4 ohm non-inductive load on the output I have the rail stiffening caps on the power supply here since those really help things and because this amplifier board had a lot of modifications I'm going to start at a low voltage uh, set the current limit to very low 300 milliamps and turn it on here and 50 milliamps on each side so the amplifier does seem to be working at least as far as current draw so let me get this camera pointed at the scope and I'll start playing around up oh, I mean experimenting okay I have the little microcontroller hooked up to the input and that's what's generating the fast square waves there we go well we're in current limit because the forum load draws quite a bit of current, so let's turn the uh, current up here. That's good enough, so now we can turn this down. You're seeing these squares because I'm triggering on the rise and falling edge at the same time, so you're just seeing these overlap. Just makes it a little easier to see things, I think, on the scope. So, with the current limited, let me pull that back down a little bit. Turn that up. Okay, so what I'm going to try now, let me adjust the uh, 
input here. Turn this up. I'm going to pull out the Miller capacitor while the amplifier is running. I do have the current still limited somewhat. And, well, it's oscillating. It's oscillating on the top, and we're in current limit. So the amplifier is oscillating at some ridiculous frequency. So the amplifier is unstable. Surprise, surprise. Now let's see what happens if I put a capacitor across the output. See if it really goes crazy then. I'm not really seeing anything there. That was a 10 nano. No, that's a, uh, it's a 222, so it's a 22 nano. Let's try this. 0.27 that rings bad on the top and there's a little oscillation now obviously the amplifier is not real happy doing this Okay, I turned off the signal, and the amplifier is just sitting here, oscillating on its own. 1.3 megahertz. You're seeing, again, that double waveform because of the way I'm triggering on the scope here. Okay, so the next capacitor I'm going to try is this 12 picofarad cap. It's a very low value, but I want to see what the amplifier does. So I'm just going to plug it in here. Ah, I can't get it to fit. What you're hearing, the relays click on the power supply as it goes in and out of its current limit mode. But I think, uh, let's turn this off once. Turn it back on. Yeah, I was just seeing if it would oscillate on its own. But let me plug this 12 picofarad cap in there. And we'll turn it on. Now it's stable. So now I'll turn the signal back on. And we're getting a little ring here and a larger overshoot in ring. Let's turn this up so we can see it. So yeah, it's ringing, but it's not oscillating. It's actually kind of stable. But that doesn't mean anything. I want to try putting capacitors across the output, seeing how that affects the stability. And that shoots stability all to hell. Well, maybe not. Now, well, hang on, my probe lead just fell off. Okay, got that hooked back up. So as I put this capacitor across the output and get the ringing. Now let me try something. Let me bypass that LR network on the output, that coil with the resistor. Look at that. See how that coil helps to stabilize the amplifier? What it's doing, because it's an inductor, it helps to greatly reduce the effects of capacitance that the amplifier sees across its output. So that's why those coils are there. However, I would not consider this amplifier to be stable even in this condition. You know, it's ringing entirely too much. Let me try another thing. Let me vary the signal level here. That might cause it to oscillate at certain different levels. See right here we're getting a lot of ringing especially on the bottom and again that could be the position well wait a minute yeah I'm not connected to that output ground return I want to take a look at if the other ground return that I made closer to the output decoupling capacitors are any better 
So remember what this looks like. I'll turn off the camera and move the connection over and see what it looks like. Okay, I moved over to that other ground lead. It actually seems to be better here. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe a little. It just goes to show you how important circuit layout is. Let me remove the coil again and see what happens. It still oscillates the same. Well, it's pretty clear to me that 12 picofarads is a little bit small. Obviously, the amplifier is just not stable. Okay, so now I've plugged in a 33 picofarad Miller compensation cap. And zoom in a little bit. Now we're not getting that ring anymore. We're kind of getting a bit of overshoot. Yeah, kind of a weird looking little ring there if I turn the level up but let's see what happens here I think the signal I'm inputting had a bit of overshoot as well so that could be contributing to it okay so this is the 0.274 microfarad cap across the output again and you can see it's ringing let's uh, bypass the coil again well, it doesn't break out into oscillation, but it, it's ringing entirely too much. So we're starting to get into a borderline region, I think. Let me check with a couple other capacitor values. Oh, hang on, my scope lead came off again. Okay, got that connected again. I need a better setup jig here, but kind of temporary. I'll try a one microfarad. It's really about the same, just a lower frequency ring. Let's see. That's coil in. I'm sorry, coil out or bypassed. Coil in, coil bypassed. I tried smaller value capacitors. I really don't get much of a result with those. Okay, that's coil in, coil bypass, coil in, bypass. That was the 0.27. Okay, so with the 33 picofarad, it, it wasn't oscillating continuously, but we were getting pretty excessive ringing. And I'm not happy with the stability there. I, I'm going to move up to a 47 picofarad, which I just installed. And you can see the overshoot is even less now. So let's see what the capacitors do. Okay, we're getting the ringing. Coil bypassed. Coil in and bypassed. So it's looking better and better. But still not great. Okay, so now I'm back up to the 100 picofarad cap. When I built this amp, I just picked that value, just kind of a guesstimate. I wasn't sure if it was going to be good or not. It would be nice to test values in between that. I don't have the capacitor. Of course, I can solder a couple caps together and make the value, but it would be nice to test like a 68 or a or 82 picofarad, but we'll just go ahead and jump up. To 100 picofarad. So again, I will uh, test with the 0.274. The smaller values just really don't do anything. Okay, so yeah, we're getting a little bit of ring, but nothing serious at all. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, let's put the coil out or bypass coil in See, the coils having less and less of an effect another thing you might notice is the slew rate is starting to drop because you can start to see that X shape see that X shape there the amplifier is real quick on the switch off but on the switch on you're getting kind of a rounded edge there it's just band limited somewhat 
However, I want to know what the slew rate of the amplifier is. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get the slew rate of this amplifier measured. So I set the, the time scale to one microsecond per division. So each graticule is one microsecond. And the voltage scale is five volts per vertical graticule. So I set the waveform at an intersection and then I just follow it up until it crosses over at the next vertical graticule and then count the voltage. We'll see how fast it is. We need to check the rising and falling edges to see if the amp is uh, at least symmetrical. It's not uncommon to have asymmetrical slew rates. I mean that's not necessarily a big problem unless there's a very big difference. Now you want to measure this in the straight parts of the waveforms. You want to stay away from the top and bottom edge because you know some of the band limiting, you know, you'll round off those edges a bit and it'll throw off your measurement. The amp is going to be really stressed. I have the signal turned all the way up close to clipping. And I got to make this test pretty quick. Things can get hot. Okay. Is where it crosses 5, 10, 15, 20. On the following, 5, 10, 15, 20. So I'll turn that off. So the amp is at 20 volts per microsecond. So that makes sense. I doubled the current in the input stage, so I got about double the slew rate now. And I'm very happy using the 100 picofarad Miller compensation capacitor. Is this the end of the test? Absolutely not. And I'll save you the boredom. I have to do a lot of tests. I have to uh, test ability at different signal levels. It's power supply voltage levels. Uh, a bunch of different capacitances across the output. And I might put it in another video, but I want to compare the input signal with the output signal and check the phase shift the frequency response of the amplifier but this video is getting pretty long and I'm going to stop it right now and always I really appreciate you guys sticking in there and watching this I know this amplifier projects going on and on but like I say I'm not in a hurry I want to make it right and I certainly have learned a lot of things building this amplifier and hopefully you know pass along some of the stuff to you guys so that's it thanks for watching and for our little snicker segment, we have a sleepy kitty on the couch here, who I just woke up. So, uh, hi Snick! Really? Oh, look this way so people can see ya. He wants to sleep! There he is! I'm going to go turn the air conditioner on. I had it off for the video because of the noise. And it's getting pretty warm in here. And Snickers is bored with everything. Catch you later, everyone.